He's been hungry. It's political um, Turkey. So there's some places one doesn't look at as closely as others because of that situation. And if you, especially if you're owned by Americans and Canadians. I was recently asked at a board meeting, were we worried in Prague that the Russians may invade? And it was a serious question. I had to point out that there was Poland, Romania, Hungary in the way, and that by that point their warehouse investments, you could forget them anyway, because it's, it's all gone pop. But it, was, you know, it shows how across the water, how, how some people do think. Yeah. And what the problems they see in Russia is, is a concern to American investors. Especially in Texas, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, and it would be interesting how it could affect some of the other former states. That could, I hope NATO stands up strong, because it needs to. At the moment, it's, it's not. We've seen what happens in history if that doesn't happen. And, and even Greece, to a certain extent, I laugh about this. Greece is 2% of European GDP, but it's the effect, uh, the perception that this could give uh, can be very bad uh, from a European standpoint. It's not a material cash effect. It's uh, the political risk. But it's the, politi yeah, exactly it's the political the risk. risk. I mean, then Spain might go for it, or Italy might go for it, mm -hmm. and then where do we stop, right? Risk is not uniform everywhere in different parts of Europe. Now, you know, from a theoretical standpoint, that should tell you you might accept a return of 6% in a mature, liquid, safe market like London, whereas in places that don't have those characteristics, you'd want a commensurately higher return. Now, Richard, quantifying I, I, those risks and building them into asset allocation and investment selection seems to me something that, you know, maybe we could push out and become a bit more precise. And, but it stops becoming scientific because it rather becomes yes or no. Because it, how do you price? How do you price the possibility of war in neighbouring Ukraine? How do you price that? You don't price it. You see, it becomes a point of yes or no. It becomes binary. Either invest, investors take fright. It's not, ah, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're still prepared to invest. We're still prepared to commit, but we, you know, we want 200 more basis points. No. The decision is, we ain't going to invest. The money disappears. So from a uh, strategic point of view, I'm firmly of the view, Northern, Northern Europe, uh, there's still opportunity in Northern Europe. It's more the what rather than the where. For me, as a developer investor, everybody has their own views, but fran frankly, playing with Southern Europe uh, and parts of Eastern Europe, it's risk, and I think that political risk is so great that it's not a question of pricing it in particular, it's going to be a binary thing. There will be an event, and that event will trigger a mass runaway of investment and a f sharp fall in values, whereas the northern parts of Europe will remain pretty resilient. That's my view. We like strong yeah. views. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think you can chase returns and chase more exciting returns in those southern markets and these European markets, but political risk is binary, it does make absolute clear cut decisions, the money runs away. We've seen it happen before, it will happen again. And for operators like, like us who, who have long term view, values will always go up and down. I mean, it's, yeah. we won't sell everything before values <laughs> go down and we won't buy everything back uh, before values start to get up. So we kind of have to live with it. Yes, as if someday will value go down again for stuff we bought last year or the year before? Yes. Is that a reason not to buy? No. Did we buy good stuff that will always be leased and you know, answer our customers' demand, even if it's in Spain? Yeah. So we're good with it.